In this lesson, we'll be talking about ionization energy and electronegativity. So we're going to be reviewing reactivity, which is one of the earlier lessons in this unit. We'll be talking about what is ionization energy, going over electronegativity, and using table S to determine the periodic trends. So what we know so far from the earlier videos is that metals will decrease in reactivity as you go from left to right in a period. However, they will become more reactive as you go down a group from top to bottom. The reason why is the larger the atomic radius, the easier it is to remove an electron to stabilize the metal atom. Nonmetals, however, they will increase in reactivity as you go from left to right. That's why all nonmetals are on the right hand side and metals are on the left. As you go from top to bottom, they will also decrease in reactivity. The reason why is the smaller the atomic radius, the greater the nuclear pull and the easier it is to obtain electrons for stability. Core electrons are closer to the nucleus and therefore have the stronger attraction to the positive nucleus. This quote unquote shields the valence electrons from feeling as strong of the pull from the positive nucleus. So this is what we call shielding effect where the inner electrons just block that positive charge from the outermost valence electrons. So ionization energy, also referred to as IE, is the amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron, the valence electron, of a metal to form a cation. Ionization energy, which is also found on table S, along with atomic radius, is measured in kilojoules per mole, or the amount of energy per amount of matter. So the trend for ionization energy is that it increases across a period as you go from left to right. Ionization energy decreases down a group, so from top to bottom. The reason why, the stronger the nuclear pull, the harder it is to remove a valence electron. So the more PELs, the more principal energy levels that you have, or the atom has, the weaker the pull will be. And the easier it will be to remove a valence electron. Right. So looking at your periodic table, as you go from left to right, your ionization energy will increase. It takes more energy to remove an electron. And as you go from the bottom upwards, it also requires more energy. So looking at group one, lithium would have more or require more ionization energy than francium. And vice versa, francium requires the least amount of ionization energy in comparison to fluorine. Electronegativity is the measure of the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. The Pauling scale from 4 to 0 is the unit of measurement that we're going to use for electronegativity. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, while cesium is the least electronegative element. And you can find all these uh, Pauling scale values on table S. The higher your electronegative number, the more likely that atom is going to be gaining electrons. Which means that the ionization energy is also going to be large. The reason why? Let's see. So electronegativity is going to increase across a period from left to right. Electronegativity will also decrease as you go down a group. The reason why is the stronger the nuclear pull from a small radius, the easier it is to obtain an electron from an outside source, which is always going to be another atom. That means electronegativity and ionization energy share the exact same trends. It's all about the size of your atom. So again, looking at your periodic table, francium is going to have your lowest, or cesium, will have your lowest electronegative value, while fluorine again will have your highest at a 4.0. Noble gases, as you will notice on table S, do not have a Pauling scale value at all. This is because noble gases are non-reactive and do not lose or gain electrons. So again, if you ever are asked to compare two elements in the same period or same group on their electronegativities or their ionization energies, always refer to table S. And sometimes they refer to just the energy to lose electrons or the attractiveness of an atom. Anytime there's a question about those, Table S will give you the answer. You don't need to guess. You just have to look it up on Table S. 
So to summarize the last two trends, ionization energy and electronegativity follow the same character. From left to right, they increase, and from bottom to top, they increase. Also, you'll notice atomic radius, which we've talked about already, they will be getting larger as you go to the bottom left of the periodic table. Everything on the left-hand side is going to be metallic, while everything on the right-hand side is going to be non-metallic.